Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel and to a new video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Today's video is going to be a little chatty get ready with me. I'm going out tonight with a friend just for a few drinks so I thought we could get ready together. I also did ask you guys to ask me some questions over on Instagram so I've got a few questions to answer and just have a bit of a chit chat with you really. If you'd like to get involved with any of these videos in the future, definitely head over to my Instagram and give me a follow over there. I am at Rose, and that is also where I post most often all of my fashion, lifestyle, bits and bobs over there. So I would definitely say give me a follow if you do have Instagram. If you also do enjoy this video, Definitely give it a like, leave a comment down below and let me know if you'd like to see more videos from me like this and hit the subscribe button to see future videos from me as well. I have a glass of wine, I was going to say a little glass of wine but it's actually quite a large glass. I'm just going to get ready, so I've got a bare face at the moment, I've not done anything with my hair either so I'm going to do full get ready with me, makeup, everything. I don't really know what I'm doing makeup wise. I normally do keep things quite simple, so I'll probably keep it simple for this as well. Since it is also really hot today, so I don't really want to be wearing too much makeup. I'm just going to quickly kind of like prep my face. Um, I will try to remember to tell you things I'm using as I go along, but I'm sorry if I forget. Okay, I'm just going to pop a lip mask on, go in with this Clinique Pore Refining Solutions and also put some under eye balm on as well. So I've got about 10 questions I think to answer, so I guess we'll get straight into it. The first question is... Um, what are your comfort TV shows slash movies? So I would say my main one would be Gilmore Girls. I've watched it probably about three times the whole way through. I just love it and it's so cosy. It's such a good like autumn-y TV series to watch. I just love it so much. Another one I love is Queer Eye. If you've not seen Queer Eye before, oh my gosh, you need to go watch it. It's such a feel-good show. Those five guys, honestly, they will make you cry, they will make you laugh. It is such a good show, so I would definitely recommend that. Gilmore Girls and Queer Eye, they're both on Netflix, so they're pretty easily accessible, which is handy. In terms of movies, I would say when I thought of this question, the first three ones that come to mind are Grease, Dirty Dancing and Ratatouille. So random, I know, but <laughs> Ratatouille is like one of my all time favorite Disney films. I don't know why, I just absolutely love it. And it is such a comfort film for me. Dirty Dancing is just a brilliant film. Again, such a comfort film, an easy watch. I'll always go to it if I don't know what to watch. And the same with Grease as well. I love the fashion and everything as well. So yeah. They are my comfort TV shows and movies, I would say. I'm just gonna go in with a concealer. So I use this Lasting Perfection one from Collection. I, I never ever use foundation. I find that it's too cakey on my face, so I always just use concealer. But the next question I've got here is, what are your favorite books? I think the first one I would say um, would be Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. I think that was such a good book. It's so, a bit of a different book to what I would normally read, but I absolutely loved it when I read it, and I would definitely read it again. And there is actually a movie coming out um, in October, I think, on Apple TV. Another one would be um, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I know it kind of blew up, but I absolutely love that book so much. It starts with us, which is the sequel. I did enjoy it, but not as much as the first one. So I would definitely recommend that book. It's more like a love story, but a bit of a twisted love story, if that makes sense. 
Um, and then the final one I would say stands out would be the Thursday Murder Club series of books. So there are three, I believe, and there's a fourth one coming out this year, which is really exciting and I will definitely be reading that. But it's just such a brilliant series. I also quickly will mention, I do have the Goodreads app. So if any of you have it and you want to add me, it would be great to see what other people are reading, to get other reading recommendations as well, because I do struggle quite a bit with knowing what to read and what's going to be good, what I'm going to enjoy. So yeah, Goodreads is a really good app. If you don't have it, but you do really enjoy reading, it's basically just this app where you can set yourself reading goals and things for the year. And then you can also follow your friends and things on there. So you can see what they've been reading, what they've loved, and you can rate books and things like that. It's just a really good app to just keep track. I like to set myself a goal every year for how many books I want to read. This year, I think I just set myself 12 so just one a month because I'm quite a slow reader. Next I'm just going to go in with my setting powder. I use this one from Clinique. It's just the loose powder. I think this one is transparent and it's my all-time favourite setting powder. If you've seen my video, my self-care video, you'll know that my skin is pretty oily so I always have to set my concealer because I just otherwise it just literally comes off like within an hour and this is the best powder for oily skin so I would highly recommend it keeps my makeup on all day next question is your tips for a healthy relationship I think the first thing I would say is honesty and trust I know that's a bit of a cliche and everyone will probably say the same thing but it is just so true if you don't have honesty and no trust there's just no relationship there, quite frankly. Like, if you don't trust the person you're with, there is just no point carrying on because you're just never gonna feel fully secure. And I think honesty comes kind of hand in hand with that. If you're not honest with the person you're with, again, it's just pointless having a relationship. Another big one I think a lot of people will say is communication. Again, that's huge for me. Communication seriously is key. If you don't communicate with each other and tell each other what you want, what you don't want from your relationship, you're just not gonna get very far. Uh, one thing that I would say maybe isn't quite so cliche, maybe is, is being able to be your true self with someone. I think that is so, so important to have a healthy relationship. If you can't be exactly who you are on your own, then there's just no point being with somebody who you're gonna to have to change for. You feel like you can't be your true self around. And if they don't love you for it, then they are so not worth it. Ditch them, move on, find someone who loves you for exactly who you are. I'm just gonna quickly pop on some blush. I just use this Max Factor one. I've had it for years. I probably shouldn't use it. It's probably way out of date, but there we go. It is the Gorgeous Berries shade. Whether they still do it, who knows. I do quite like quite a lot of blush, so I'm just going to pop this on. Um, one last thing as well with this healthy relationship question. I think a big, big thing for me is to be able to just do nothing with someone. That is so important. And what I mean by that is not necessarily like you just sit there in silence and it'd be fine. Like obviously that's good to have someone who you can just sit and you don't have to talk and fill every single bit of silence with talk. That's obviously really important. But what I mean is just like just being happy in each other's company and it doesn't matter what you're doing. What matters is you just want to be with that person basically. Those things are definitely really important to me anyway, to have a healthy relationship. Obviously it varies from person to person, but they're the key things that I would say that's what I look for. Anyway, I feel like that was a very deep question quite early on, so we're gonna move on. I'm also gonna just pop a bit of bronzer on. Again, this is a really old bronzer, but I don't use it very often, but I think at the moment my concealer is a little bit light for my face. 
when I'm tanned in the sun so I feel like I need to add just a bit of colour and definition back in. So the next question is, do you have any tattoos? I feel like if you follow me on Instagram, you maybe know that I do have tattoos. Probably, you probably don't realise how many I have because I don't really flaunt them and you can't actually see most of them either. Um, I'll insert some clips of the tattoos I have. So I've got four all together. I would love to have more, but I don't currently know what else I would get right now. The first one I ever got, I was 18. It's just um, underneath my boob, like on my rib cage. And it's a quote. It says, dream, believe, achieve. This one was a really personal one for me. I absolutely loved the dance group diversity. Well, I have done for years and years and years, but it kind of started when they first won Britain's Got Talent back in 2009. I'm just putting on some highlighter, by the way. This is a Revolution one, the Heartbreakers. I love their packaging, it's so pretty. Um, yes, so I remember my mum telling me a story that when I was like 13, I said to her that I wanted to get a tattoo saying dream believe achieve and obviously at that age you can't get a tattoo but she was hoping to put me off by saying that she wanted a tattoo and apparently it did but then when I turned as soon as I turned 18 I was like no I still really want this so that was my first one the second one I got is a sunflower on my ankle which I absolutely love I can't remember how old I was when I got that one I feel like I was at uni so I must have been 19 or 20 maybe when I got that done but I absolutely love that and then I got um, a little Mickey Mouse like silhouette on my opposite ankle which again I love my friend actually did that for me so she was kind of training to be a tattoo artist at the time so she did that for me so that's also really personal oh the sunflower as well by the way I didn't even say Basically all my tattoos are personal and I personally would never get a tattoo that isn't personal to me. I love tattoos and I love how they look, but for me I need a meaning behind everything I get. So the sunflower, sunflower is my favourite flower and um, I've always called my boyfriend my sunflower. So there is relevance there as well. The most recent one that I have got is some elephants on my wrist. That is probably the one that you would have seen if you follow me on Instagram or you might have even noticed it already on my YouTube if you are subscribed. The elephants represent me and my mum. So I'm the little baby elephant. She's obviously the mum elephant. And the reason they're walking up my arm is because they're walking towards my heart, which is really cute. I got those maybe pre-COVID, so like two years ago, but that's my most recent. And yeah, I would love to get more, but right now I just, there is nothing that I really want. And every single tattoo that I've got, I have thought about for at least a year before getting it, because obviously they are permanent. I would never want to get something that I regret getting. And to this day, well, I'm now 24 first one I got was when I was 18 and I still absolutely love it so it just goes to show that making good decisions with tattoos is very important you never want to regret it and also the placement of all of my tattoos I've put a lot of thought behind thinking how they're going to look when I'm older obviously my skin is not going to look the same forever so the placement was really important for everything and I've made sure that they've they're in places that aren't gonna kind of disform too much if you know what I mean so yes short answer is yes I do have tattoos let me know if you're surprised by that because I feel like a lot of people when I meet new people they're always really surprised that I've got tattoos I don't know I guess I just don't strike people as like a tattoo kind of person I don't know why but there we go yeah I'd love to know if you are shocked that I do actually have tattoos or not. Next up for my makeup, what am I going to do? I'm going to put some eyeshadow on I think. So I'm going to use this Naked 3 Urban Decay palette. Again, I've had this for absolutely years. Probably shouldn't be using it, but oh well. The next question is, what is your favourite music genre? Now this 
is actually a really hard one because I have a very varied music taste, I feel. I don't just like one music genre and it also definitely depends on my mood. I think the main ones, the first thing I would go for is like rock and roll, 50s rock and roll. So Elvis Presley. Elvis is like my, my number one artist, I would say. I also love jazz music, so very, very different, but again, kind of a similar era. Um, so I absolutely love Frank Sinatra. He's one of my top artists as well. Another one is Michael Bublé. I know he's like jazz pop, but I absolutely love him. I actually went to see him last year and he was incredible. Another one of my main music genres I would say is pop. I love like Ed Sheeran, The Wanted, Sam Ryder, a bit of Harry Styles, a bit of Mika, but then I also do expand out even more. Like I feel like my taste in music is so varied, it's unbelievable. It definitely depends on my mood. Like sometimes I'll be really into like listening to dance music, which is so unusual for me, but I don't know, in the summer as well, I feel like my music taste change, changes so much and I really enjoy listening to like dance music. Um, just like that vibey kind of thing, barbecues and stuff. But yeah, I have quite a varied music taste, I would say. Next question is, if you could meet one celebrity, who would it be? Ooh. If he was still alive and in his prime, I would love to meet Elvis Presley, but he is obviously dead. <laughs> when I got asked this question, I was really thinking about who I would want to meet. And I think it's a really difficult one because I seriously couldn't think of anybody that I would meet. I was like, it's not, I'm not really fussed. I mean, I used to be. I always wanted to meet uh, diversity when I loved them ended up meeting them quite a few times and that's kind of like a different part of my life now as well so I wouldn't feel the need to have to meet them again. So yeah it was a bit of a hard one to think of who I would want to meet but then this week actually on Wednesday I went to a gig to see Mika perform and oh my god he was incredible. Like, there are very few artists that I've kind of, you know when you just get that feeling when you're listening to them live, you just kind of get goosebumps all over, you feel like you want to cry a little bit because they're just so good. I've had that with Michael Bublé and now Mika. They're the only two people that I've ever seen perform and I felt that way. I think he's just so influential and just his energy is insane. If you get a chance to go see him live, I would 100% recommend going. But yeah, after that gig, yeah, I would want to meet Mika. He is just such an inspiration and I feel like, well, he came out into the crowd when he was performing and he just was walking around, dancing with everyone. And I think that speaks volumes for a celebrity, especially someone as famous as him, to just come out and actually interact with people that way. It's just incredible. And I think he would, the way that he was talking as well and telling stories and stuff on the stage, I think he would be an incredible man to meet. And of course, his songs are very influential. He's an incredible man. He's definitely inspired me from a very young age to, to be exactly who I want to be. And through his music, he has done that, I feel, with so many people. Okay, we're going for a deep question again. How do you always stay so positive and have a positive mindset all the time? I like this question because I like that I can share my the ways that I try and stay positive. But I also want to clarify, I am not positive all the time. I know over social media it's so hard to not think that because people are obviously going to only show the best parts of their life or the parts that they feel comfortable sharing but 
I would say I am a very positive person. I do try to radiate positivity and make other people positive as well. I do always try to look at the positives in life rather than the negatives. I like to manifest things in my life which I think really helps me be positive. But yes, I'm definitely not positive all the time. I would say most of the time, yes, but there are definitely days or just times in life where I just don't feel so positive and that's okay as well. Like, it's very normal to not feel positive and happy all the time. In terms of how I do keep a positive mindset, I am quite an optimist and I like to look, thing, look at things from a positive perspective rather than a negative, so I'm very much a glass half full kind of person, which I think is a key thing of how I stay positive. Obviously, it does take practice. I've not always been that way through reading and following the right people on social media and adjusting my mindset and where I spend my time, who I spend my time with has certainly helped me to become more of an optimist in everyday life. Another thing as well I feel like makes me quite positive is that I really enjoy making other people happy and making people smile and making other people look at the positives in their life rather than the negatives. So I think that, because that brings me so much joy, I just, yeah, I, I kind of, I guess I look at it in the way that I try to keep positive for other people as well as myself, which, I don't know, it's just a nice way to look at it. Okay, I'm gonna move on, quickly do my eyebrows. I don't really do much with my eyebrows. I just use this e.l.f. you literally can't see the packaging because it's rubbed off. e.l.f. Wow Brow. It's just like this brow gel, but really not too heavy, again, because I don't like a heavy makeup look. I stay very natural. I do need to pluck my eyebrows, but I haven't. Oh well. Now I'm gonna quickly put some eyeliner on. I'm just gonna do just a quick kind of thin line on my eyelid. Next question is, what are your top three clothing brands? I shop mostly on Vinted. I'm just going in with my Benefit Roller Lash, by the way. This is the best mascara. But I guess, when I go and shop on Vinted, the main brands that I shop for would be H&M, New Look, and probably Ted Baker. But I also do buy a fair amount from Hollister. I really like Hollister for their summer stuff mainly. I'm just gonna finish my mascara. Okay, I think my face is done. So I'm just gonna spray with some setting spray and then I'll put some lipstick on. Okay, next question as well. Would you want to be a social media influencer for your job? Immediate answer, yes, I think it would be really cool. But then I have thought about it and whether I would wanna do that and pursue it and push social media and everything. And I think from what other influencers say, I think it would be seriously hard work and also really up and down as well because every month is going to be different you're never going to earn the same amount and you're also you're always going to have to stick on top of trends which i hate doing and i really wouldn't want my content to be just all about sticking to trends to just get the views so that i get paid so i think when i actually sit down and think about whether i would want to do it i would say absolutely no i just think it would be too much hard work and not the kind of work that I would enjoy doing full time and having to rely on that as well to, to form my income. Social media has definitely allowed me to, to be more confident and to communicate with other like-minded people as well. And I think this platform as well has even expanded and it's amazing to be able to talk to other people and communicate through the comments and just, yeah, kind of have a chat a little bit. But yeah, the fact that I've made friends from social media is just incredible. So if any of you are wondering whether you should just do it, I would say just go for it. That's what I did, especially with my YouTube channel. I've wanted to do it for so long, and in the end I just thought, why? what have I got to lose? There is literally nothing. 
if it flops, it flops. But as long as I'm enjoying it, that's all that matters. Again, I'm not doing it for the numbers, for the views. I'm simply doing it because this is something that I enjoy. I enjoy being creative and editing these videos is fun for me. It is my hobby. So I will do it for as long as I enjoy it. When it gets to the point where I feel like it's more of a burden than a joyful thing, that's when I'll probably stop. But at the moment, and not also not having that pressure of followers wanting you to release content all the time, there is no pressure for me to have to stick to a schedule. So if I don't post one week, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. And I would say the same for you. If you're starting out, it really doesn't matter if you don't stick to this schedule. Just do it and just have fun with it. Lipstick first. I'm going to use this Too Faced one because I'm wearing black tonight, which is unusual for me. I'm going to go for a more bold colour. It's like this really pretty pinky peach colour and it does smell amazing. It smells like peaches. What shade is this? This is called Peach Beach. I love this lipstick. It's so summery. I'm just going to pop some setting spray. No, not setting spray. Heat protection in my hair. I might actually take my glasses back off because otherwise it's just going to get covered in this stuff. I'm going to do like a fake blow dry kind of hairstyle tonight just because it's really quick, easy and there's no point curling my hair because it's probably just going to end up being flat by the end of the night since it's hot and instead of my hair going more frizzy in the heat my hair is naturally very straight so it just flattens instead. Final question is who was your inspiration growing up? Now I feel like I've kind of touched on this a little bit throughout the video. Um, I obviously mentioned diversity, the dance group earlier with my tattoo and everything. They were definitely a really big influence on my life when I was growing up. Um, they were a real inspiration to me. I think their outlook on life, on how to get what you want, obviously dream, believe, achieve, I think is so, so true. If you want something, you just have to, it's the whole thing of like manifesting it. Manifest it, but you also need to go out and get it, get things done. I think that's their whole kind of thing and I love it. I obviously did mention Mika as well. Mika's music was definitely an inspiration for me to, to be myself, to always be true to myself. I think he was definitely a big influence. I also think it's really important to say the people in my life, my family, my biggest inspiration is probably my mum and she's been the biggest influence in my life as well. She's always been there for me through everything. She's my best friend and she's a huge inspiration to me. But yeah, they're, I would say, the main, my main inspirations growing up anyway. Obviously it changes as you get older and I've gained more people in my life as I've grown up who continue to be an inspiration to me. But yes, I'm just gonna finish off my hair now, do a quick time lapse whilst I do that and I will see you when I'm all ready and I will show you all my outfit and everything. So I am all ready. I just popped on some jewelry, some pearl jewelry and some sparkly jewelry with my watch. I'll link this dress below as well because it is from H&M this year. I actually just ordered the pink one from Vintage. I found it for a really, really good price. I'll quickly show you full length and my shoes, my bag and everything. Ooh. This is what it looks like and it's got really pretty like tie detail at the back. Um, I've just got on some sparkly sandals with it. Let me show you. These are from New Look from a few years ago. And I'm also going to wear my 
Michael Kors bag with the studs. So it all matches. So I will say goodbye, thank you for watching. Um, if you did like this video, definitely click on the subscribe button um, so that you know every time I post a new video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.